All right, what's up? Week 15 of the 11 weekly video updates. Straight out the gate, we're going to go right into Community Roundup. Uh, Raymond had a great post about a filter to show related content by the day of the year. So if you have a blog and you want to show the posts that were written last year or the year before on the same day, check that out. In that same vein, Justin Ponilt um, has another plugin called the 11 Plugin Related. Uh, which does a similar thing, but for similarly titled content. So check out that plugin. David Darns realized that the balloon in 11D's communication uh, was related to static in some way, which I thought was interesting. And Brett Doherty published a blog post about their about their SVG inlining plugin. So check that out. Cloud Cannon had a very interesting blog post about why the web is turning away from WordPress. 11, you got a couple of really nice mentions in there. Uh, I thought this chart at the top was kind of interesting. A lot of static site generators popularity is gauged based on a tool called Built With, um, which actually spiders a bunch of websites to find what they are built with. Now in SSG land, this is usually tied to the meta name generator tag, which in 11D is notably opt in instead of opt out. Um, so I think you'll probably see as more sites adopt the meta generator tag in 11D, specifically, that 11D's usage will, will probably be underreported because of that. But still, a really great blog post about static site generators and the future of the web in a non WordPress context. Ben Myers had a great blog post about how they doubled their Lighthouse performance score. Um, it's really just a very thorough run, rundown of the changes they made to improve the performance of their site. That was great. Sam Smith wrote a blog post about the colon has pseudo class, uh, and there is some tie in to 11D down here, specifically with the, the Speedlify score web component and how to theme it. I thought it was really kind of a cool use case. Now, the Jamstack community survey is in its next iteration. Uh, the 2022 version is now out. I'd love to see a lot of 11D developers represented in this. Um, so if you have a minute or two, please go and fill out the survey. I think it would do a lot for 11D specifically and how 11D is represented in the Jamstack world. Now the built with 11D section of the community roundup this week was um, loaded. There's a lot of new sites that came out um, and it's really great to see. Off the top, ESLint launched a new site. Um, a bunch of different contributors to that one. Uh, you probably have heard Sarah Sweden talking about it a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's a really great site. I would recommend checking it out. This is built with 11D. Humans Machines launched a new website. Zombie Hunt launched a new website. DefensiveCSS.dev, which was a site that kind of went viral a little bit on Twitter this week, um, this past week. So check that one out. Built with 11D. Gary Lake launched their new professional personal website. And I think this one is not necessarily new this week, but maybe new to the 11D Twitter account. Um, Sam King launched a site that has some 2022-2021 weekly statistics. They're just aggregating a bunch of things about their uh, personal life, and I thought it was really kind of a cool use of 11D. Browsers FYI is a brand new uh, microsite built with 11D, uh, made by Stefan. James Dante launched a new personal site. Norma Design launched a new site. And Bookworm Stats, a fan project for the Bookworm podcast, built with 11D. Now, the theme of last week was mostly centered around the pass-through file copy feature. So this is how, in 11D projects, we use an opt-in mechanism to copy static files to our output. These files are not processed by any template language. They're just copied um, plain. Now, you can use this for images, CSS files, any JavaScript, really any f static file that you want to be included in your build. Uh, you do need to opt into th that file appearing in your output directory with the pass-through file copy feature. Now, starting in 11.1.0, we did actually introduce a new error messaging feature that would tell you if multiple pass-through file copy entries in your configuration were writing to the same output file. Now the er error messaging was a little bit too aggressive in that if the entries, if multiple entries were referencing the same input files, um, 
you would still get the error messaging. So it would report an error, even if it was two different entries were pulling from the same file and copying it multiple times to the output. Now we've lightened this up a little bit. So if your globs are um, causing duplicate entries, uh, we won't actually throw an error message anymore on 2.0 for that. Now we will if you have multiple pass-through file copy entries that are using distinct input files and writing to the same output. But we won't throw an error if you're using, if you just have the same file listed multiple times. Now this old GitHub pull request from GitHub user Malahu uh, did get merged this last week. And it um, basically related to passing extra advanced options into our recursive copy package that we use as a dependency that facilitates our pass-through file copy feature. So you can now have it access to the more advanced options of that package um, if you want to do that. And I think the primary use case, at least for this user in particular, was around using symlinks with add pass-through copy. So prior to this PR and prior to the 2.0 release, pass-through copy did not work with symlinks. And if you do need that feature, you can now enable that using the extra options um, object that is now available in add pass-through copy method. And we have that documented. Um, if you go down to the advanced options section of the documentation, you can see how to use that. Um, and it's really all just part of the recursive copy uh, package. There's some interesting uh, things that are made available inside of this. You can actually rename files if you want uh, a little bit tighter control over the output file name that comes out of pass-through file copy. You can now have access to that inside of this rename option. Um, and you can also transform stuff. So if you want full access to the file stream, uh, you can modify the the files as they're copied as well. So it unlocks really a lot of different advanced use cases that were not possible before. Um, so I think it's a really great way to have more advanced control over that feature. And the big thing that came out of last week, we did a bunch of work around pass-through copy and really removed it from local build performance impact altogether. So we're kind of calling this feature for free pass-through copy. It works with the 11 dev server to transparently just access the pass-through copy files directly. So if you're using 11 with the dash dash serve argument on the command line, uh, it won't actually copy anything to your output folder. Um, you do need to run either in watch mode or just a standard build for those pass-through copy files to show up in your output directory. Uh, and in dash dash serve mode, uh, we just reference those files directly. Now this does kind of create a, uh, a list of approved files in the dev server that you can reference directly in your project. And it should just work uh, right out of the box. You, sh you don't have to do any additional configuration to opt into this feature. Uh, it just works automatically in, in Canary 12. And we have this on the documentation as well if you go to the pass through during serve uh, section of the docs. If you'd like to revert to the previous behavior, uh, we do provide an escape hatch for you to do so. Um, the default here is pass through, but if you want to change it back to copy, you can just pass that in here and we'll revert to the previous behavior of copying all of your pass through file copy entries uh, to your output direct directory as part of your build during dash dash serve mode. All right, and I do want, kind of want to show you what it looks like because I think this is an important feature that might might not be as obvious how powerful it is until you see it in action. So let's take a look at the 11D base blog project. Um, I've already upgraded it in this branch to use the 2.0 version of 11D, or the new 2.0 Canary, and we have already released the Canary 12. So if you want access to this feature, um, it's available on the Canary release tag. And in this project specifically, we have two pass-through copy entries. One is the image directory, which just has, I just have a cool kid.jpg image in here, just as a sample. Um, and then the CSS directory is another one. So we just have a few CSS files listed inside of this folder. So this folder is copied straight to the output, and the image folder is copied straight to the output when you run a build. 
but what does it look like when you do a serve? So in this project specifically, we have this start npm script mapped to dash dash serve. All right, so we have our development server running. We have our browser showing the uh, live view of the site. Um, and what we want to do is go in and modify one of the files that's eligible for pass through file copy. Now I have the index.css file, which is in our CSS directory. And previous versions of 11 I would, if you make edits to this file, say if I change the color to red, it would have rerun your entire build, um, which is pretty speedy for this project because it's a very small project. There's not very much to it. Build time is, uh, is about 200, 100 to 200 milliseconds total. Um, so the, really there's not much to it. But in new versions of 11 and in larger projects, you'll see a lot of benefit from the new behavior, which is that when you make changes to this, it doesn't actually run a new build. It just hot reloads the web browser that you have and applies your changes directly. It doesn't run a full build. Uh, 11 doesn't run a build at all, um, but changes are automatically hot reloaded inside of your web browser. So you really get uh, the same behavior that you would see previously, but without having to wait for a full build cycle to see those changes reflected, um, which I think is pretty great, uh, especially because the CSS changes specifically don't require a page reload to be applied. Um, so it should make for a lot faster and a lot tighter build times for when you're making changes to pass through file copy files specifically. But do keep in mind that these files won't show up in your output folder in, when you're using dash dash serve. Um, they're referenced straight from your input folder uh, when they're served inside of the dev server. Um, so just keep that in mind if you're looking at your output folder and you're wondering where those pass through file copy entries uh, went to. All right, so there was a lot of work that went into making that feature uh, basically free without any additional configuration and also allowing you to fall back to the previous behavior. If you did rely on those files to show up in your output directory during dash dash serve mode with the 11 dev server. So uh, <laughs> that was a mouthful, but um, yeah, there shouldn't be any additional work that you need to do to take advantage of this feature, uh, only if you need to fall back to the previous behavior. And so yeah, let me know how it works for you. Uh, hopefully you get some faster builds out of it, or even avoiding some builds altogether when you're using the local dev uh, experience. So let me know how it goes and keep building y'all.